The bike feels really fast and reactive for a touring bike. I can go from tarmac to gravel to single track to forest roads to tarmac again to double track to slightly technical sections to cycling paths. It has plenty of different possible configurations for long trips or weekend rides. The components are very simple and low tech and half of them are second hand actually. After a lot of research and hard work I think I managed to build myself a bike that I'm pretty happy with and that actually didn't cost me a lot of money. I'm Francisco from Bicycle Picnic and this is the process of building my very own version of a Surly Bridge Club. This video is divided into three parts. First the components I'm using and their prices. Second the building process and third the results. Let's get into it. The components and their prices. The frame set. I made a full overview about the frame set and I'll put the link over here in case you want to check it out for more detailed information. This is the Surly Bridge Club 2022 and I bought it online for 630 euros. The wheels. This frame can take 26 inches wheels, 27 5 inches wheels and 28 inches wheels. For this build I chose 27.5 because of three reasons mainly. First, with 27.5 wheels it's possible to have a good tire clearance, much better than with 28 inches wheels or 700 as they say here. Second, the external diameter of 27.5 wheels is bigger than 26 inches wheel and you might already know this but the bigger the external diameter the better the wheel rolls. And third, the widest choice for mountain bike and gravel tires is for 27.5, period. I bought the components and built the wheels myself, which is not much cheaper than buying a new wheel set, but it does give you more freedom of choice. These are the components I used. For the front hub I'm using a Shimano Dior M6000, 100mm hub spacing and I got it for 20 euros. For the rear hub I'm using a Shimano M3050, 135mm of hub spacing and I also got it for 20 euros. The rims are the Rodi Ready 30. 30 millimeters is the width of the rim and 584 is the diameter of the rim. I bought both of them for 60 euros. For the spokes I'm using sapping rays which are double butted stainless steel and they cost 1 euro per spoke so I spent 64 euros for the two wheels. The total for the wheel set is 164 euros and all the components are new. The tires. I bought the Maxxis Icon on 2.2 inches which is 55 millimeters. They weigh 660 grams, which is very light for mountain bike tires with this level of protection. They are fast running tires and mostly for dry terrain, which is okay for me because I usually try to avoid riding in muddy conditions. I did set them up tubeless to have the possibility to lower the air pressure when I'm riding off-road without risking having a flat. Also, I feel like with tubeless there is a little bit less inertia, especially when accelerating, so the acceleration is a little bit more reactive, which is a feeling I like. These tires have excellent reviews and the price was 70 euros for the pair. The bottom bracket compatibility for the bridge club is 73 millimeters threaded. So I got this mountain bike Shimano Saint which actually works for both 68 and 73 millimeters bottom brackets and it's compatible with Shimano Holotech 2 which is the current standard for Shimano cranksets. The price was 20 euros. The crankset. I decided to use a very old school 3x9 drivetrain mostly because it's been easy to find second hand parts for this configuration but also because I feel it really gives me the gear range I need. I don't need more than 3 times 9 For the crankset I'm using the second hand triple Shimano Alivio. It's a little bit worn out but I think I can still get some kilometers out of it. This is an old crankset that I had on another bike and it got replaced for a one by. This crankset new cost about 70 euros. The cassette. I'm using the standard 9 speed cassette 11 to 34 teeth. I wanted an 11 36 but I couldn't find but anyway I think it's gonna be fine especially because I have a triple crankset at the front so I have the gear range that I need. For the cassette I paid 23 euros. The chain. I'm using a standard Shimano Dior 9-speed chain 
I paid 18 euros for it. Rear derailleur. I'm using a Shimano Dior 9 speed M591 and the price was 54 euros from derailleur. I'm using a triple Shimano Alivio 9 speed compatible. The exact model is M. 3100M. This is not what Surly recommends for this frame. They recommend a top pull derailleur and this one is a front pull derailleur. They also recommend an adapter plus a direct mount derailleur and this one is just a normal derailleur with a clamp. So it's not what is recommended for the front derailleur but I want to give it a try because it's much cheaper than buying the adapter plus the derailleur. We'll see if it works in a minute. The price was 19 euros. The shifters and brake levers. I've had these levers unused for a few years now, so I think it's time to give them a second life. There are Shimano Alivio 3x9 shifters with V-brake levers that are also compatible with cable disc brakes. The price for these ones is about 50 euros. The brakes. I chose Avid BB7 cable pulled disc brakes first because they are kind of low tech and simple. They are easy to install, easy to adjust, easy to maintain and repair. Even if they need to be adjusted a bit more often than hydraulic brakes. I still prefer the simplicity and the fact that everything can be done with just a couple of allen keys. There are many good reviews about these brakes and they are supposed to have excellent braking power, especially with 180 mm rotors like this. The price for the set with the rotors was 100 euros. I'm using the Shimano EH500 Explorer. They are clipless on one side and flat on the other side, so I have both possibilities depending on the nature of my trip. They cost about 60 euros, but I got them secondhand for 25 euros. The saddle. I'm using this beautiful Salitalia flight that really looks amazing with this leather finish and um, it's also very comfortable for me, even though it doesn't have much padding and it's more on the sporty side of saddles. You know saddles are very personal so it might work for me but it, it might not work for you. This one I'm using uh, is a couple of years old, I've been using it on all the bikes so it's not new but it is a little bit expensive if you buy new it's about 130 euros. The headset. I'm using this Ricci WCS headset. I checked the specs of what Surly recommends on their website and they match perfectly with the specs of the headset. I bought it secondhand for 20 euros and knew it cost about 60 euros. I'm using this beautiful Nito Bullmose handlebar that I actually bought years ago for another project that never came to life. For the price, I paid 87 euros in 2020 the grips are a little bit thin, but I'm going to give them a try. They were a gift from a friend. They probably cost somewhere about 15 to 20 euros. This is May 2022 and there's a lot of inflation and not much availability of bike and bike parts at the moment. I looked online to compare the price of my build with the price of the complete bike and what I find is the bike selling at about 1,500 euros. My build, considering all the parts as new, comes to 1,600 euros. And considering only the parts that I actually bought, because many secondhand parts I had them already, I only spent 1,097 euros. If you want to build this bike with new parts, I think for the same budget of 1,600 euros, you could also put a drivetrain of 2x10 or 1x11 if you stay in the Shimano Dior price range. The building process. For getting the headset installed, I did have to get help from a professional bike shop because I don't have the press for the headset at home. As you can see, the handlebar I'm using has an integrated stem, which looks very cool, but if the handlebar is either too far or too close, I won't be able to exchange the stem like on a normal handlebar. I'll be doing a preliminary bike fit as soon as I get the wheels, the saddle and the pedals on.
For setting up the Maxis icon on tubeless, I also had to go to a bike shop to be able to use the compressor. These tires were extremely easy to set up tubeless. So the preliminary bike fit is looking good. Only thing I wish the handlebar had a little bit of raise so I could put less spacers. But other than that, everything looks good. For the front derailleur, Surly recommends a top pull and they made the routing for the housing from the top. Nevertheless, I was able to make the housing pass under the diagonal tube and go directly to the front derailleur and it seems to work and it looks fine too. After installing the front derailleur, I realize when I'm on the lowest gear, the derailleur gets pretty close to the tire, seven millimeters to be precise, meaning that I shouldn't put tires much wider than the Maxis Icon 2.2 that I'm using right now. This is certainly the reason why they recommend using adapters with different offsets for the front derailleur. There are different possible drivetrain configurations that would give you different tire clearances for this frame. The one I'm using right now is with a normal 135 millimeters rear wheel hub, a normal triple crankset and a normal front derailleur. And as for what I can see, the max tire clearance with this configuration is about 2.3 inches, I would say. Just a tiny bit more than the 2.2 that I'm using. And probably if you put a double or a mono crankset, the clearance would increase a few millimeters for sure. If you want the maximum tire clearance of 2.8 inches, you need a boost configuration, which is a boost rear wheel hub of 141 millimeters plus a boost crankset and in the case of using a front derailleur this should be installed using an adapter with a 29 millimeters offset that's all information that i got from surly's website So now that the bike is fully assembled, I can do a weight check. So fully assembled, the bike weighs 14 kilos, which is not very light, but it's a touring bike anyway, and to go off-road. So it needs to be strong. That's why I wasn't expecting to have a light bike. Anyway, that's all for the assembling and adjusting process. The bike is ready to ride now. Woo! The ride test. First, for the size, I'm 1.83 meters or six feet tall, and I'm very happy with the size large, although I'm pretty sure I could also fit on an XL size with a slightly shorter stem, probably. The bike feels really reactive when accelerating or climbing. This is partly thanks to the relatively short chain stay. The bridge club has 25 millimeters shorter chain stays than a classic touring bike like the Surly Long Haul Trucker, for example. This helps to have a more responsive rear end, which I personally like a lot. The handling of the bike is stable enough to feel confident off-road, but it's not as stable as a mountain bike, of course. On the other hand, when I'm riding on tarmac, the bike feels really easy to handle, like a real touring or commuter bike. 
I think the Maxis Icon 2.2 are also helping with the responsiveness of the rear end and the easiness of handling of the front end. They are light off-road tires with relatively low contact resistance and they are also on the narrow side of off-road tires and they are also set up tubeless. So all these things contribute to the reactivity and the easiness of handling. If you were to put heavier tires or wider mountain bike tires, the reactivity would decrease for sure. I think the handlebar is at the right position and it has the right width. Because of the double stem, I'm able to attach a small volume with a bungee cord and that's very practical. At times, I feel the handlebar is slightly over stiff. It's actually a very robust handlebar made out of steel and with, with a double stem. It's just uh, maybe a little bit too much. I just wish it had also a bit more raise so I didn't have to put so many spacers to get it to the right height. For the brakes, the Avid BB7 work really well, they feel powerful, they have enough modulation I find, they are easy to adjust, easy to install, low tech, I love them. The drivetrain is working perfectly and uh, for the front derailleur, which is not exactly what Sergi recommends, it works perfect. So the only issue from using a normal front derailleur is that reduction on the tire clearance. Because with this configuration, you know, we just saw I'm getting somewhere between 2.2 and 2.3 inches max tire clearance. The gear range is certainly enough for my type of riding. I'm used to using Shimano and this mix uh, between Shimano Dior and Shimano Alivio works fine for me. Although in the future, I might upgrade everything to Shimano Dior to have a more coherent drivetrain, but for the moment, it works just fine. So that's it. I'm really happy with my build, very happy with the geometry of the bike and the simplicity of the frame specs and the simplicity of the components. I also think uh, it's the perfect compromise for riding off-road and also being able to cover long distances on tarmac. I hope this video was useful for you. Like and subscribe if you wish and see you next time.